Patrice. I'm the administrator at Medina Valley Health and Rehab. Um, I had actually brought along um, Kendra. Kendra's my social worker. Um, I have my director of nursing here, Sharon Ake, and some nurse managers are here, and my director of rehab came along. We just wanted to tell you a little bit of what we do at Medina Valley. Um, I think for a long time, a nursing and rehab had a, a stigma to it, but it has changed so much over the years. And so we just wanted to tell you, hey, we're here, this is what we do, and we'd love for y'all to come by, swing by, do a tour, we're open, we have visitors, we do a lot of fun stuff. Um, we offer health care, but I always tell my families when they come to tour, we're like a cruise ship. We have lots of activities, lots of food, and we just happen to do health care. So we try to make it a lot of fun for our residents that are there, whether it be for short term or for long term. Um, but we're going to tell you a little bit about what we do. Here's Kendra. So as Patrice said, uh, my name is Kendra, and I'm the director of social services at the rehab center. And we also are planning a lot more events to kind of have the community see what we're doing at the facility. So hopefully in the summertime or the beginning of school, we can have some more events as well. They're going to be family oriented. Uh, we also are going to be at the 4th of July parade as well. So that's just kind of the things that we want to get the community involved with. Um, but mostly what I wanted to talk about with you guys is more of the maybe stigmas or myths that you guys have with um, skilled nursing and long-term care. So there's two sides to our facility. So we have the skilled nursing side, which is more of a short term. So that is maybe if you or a loved one was in the hospital for maybe a surgery or they had a stroke or something like that, they would then come to our facility for inpatient rehab and skilled nursing services. So kind of how that would work is all of the case managers at the hospitals or the social workers there as well would send us the referral. That's all you have to do. Say, I wanna to go to Medina Valley. That is my facility of choice. And that case manager or social worker at the hospital will send us all of your information and we can get that going. We'll run your insurance We'll see if you have benefits. Once you're there with the therapy and the skilled nursing, that's when kind of Patrice and the rest of my team will meet with you and your family members to see what your overall plan is, to make sure you're receiving the therapy services um, and nursing services so you're safe to go home. So we do all of our therapy services in-house. So we have PT, OT, speech therapy, we also are offering outpatient therapy as well now at Medina Valley. That's something that I just learned today. So we're happy to have you guys come in, even if you're going for maybe like a day surgery, um, like lots of knee replacements, hip replacements recently. Let that case manager know that Medina Valley is doing outpatient therapy now and just have them send us the referral. We're happy to look at it. That's not an issue. And then the other side of our care facility is long-term care. So I know there's a lot of myths with it. Um, a lot of times my grandma will come to me and say, hey, I was at the taqueria on Wednesday and so-and-so told me that they have to get on Medicaid but they're gonna lose their house. That's not true. Just get that out of your mind right now. Don't be afraid to come in and ask us questions. If you're taking care of a loved one at home, maybe it's getting too much for you to care for them. Caregiver burnout is real. Don't feel guilty if you're taking care of a friend, a family member. Come in and ask us for help. We'll be more than happy to show you what you need to do to have that family member placed at our facility. Of course, there's private pay options, and we can definitely go over those rates with you um, at the facility, but there's also the option to apply for Medicaid. Again, you're not gonna lose your house. It's a very simple application that our business office would help you complete. It's not something that we say here, take home, fill it out, we'll get back to you. No, we are hands-on at the facility. We're with you every step of the way to make that transition as smooth as possible because it's a very stressful time in your life. 
transitioning to home and long-term care. So our business office would help you with that application. We would look at financials, medical, to make sure just you meet the needs to be in the facility. It's, it's very simple. I know it sounds all daunting right now that I'm saying it and just saying it so easily, but it really is. Um, but we have quite a large population right now. We're trying to grow our census. Um, we can go up to 116 beds, 116 beds at the facility. So, um, I mean, please, if you guys have any questions, that's why we wanted to come here today to just let you know that we are here. We can be a resource for the community. You guys can call the facility anytime and ask for myself, Patrice, if you have any questions. Um, even if it's not for yourself, say you have a friend or something, tell them to call us. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions in regards to Medicare, skilled nursing, long-term care. Um, you know, we wanna just kind of break the stigmas get all the facts straight with it. And like Patrice said, come in and see us. I know it's kind of been a weird phase with COVID and the doors have kind of seen locked, like maybe like the Willy Wonka factory, like, oh, we see people coming in, but <laughs> we don't see people coming out. So <laughs> the doors may be locked right now, but just ring the doorbell. Miss Kelly, our lovely receptionist will be there. Open the door with a smile and say, I want a tour or I want to come in and talk to Patrice or Kendra or one of our other managers. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, we're also looking for volunteers for our activities. I know someone had mentioned to Clarissa earlier that they weren't able to come in and give communion, I believe, or church service. Give us a call. The residents love church service. They love to have communion. Um, you know, anything, if you guys are having like a quilting class or something like that, um, someone to call bingo. We're basically running a bingo hall. I mean, we have it every day. <laughs> we have bingo every single day at 2.30 if you want to join. <laughs> we don't have bingo, it's muting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's just kind of what an overview was. Um, do you guys have any questions, comments? Anything you've been wondering, you pass the nursing home every day. <laughs> so if somebody wants to volunteer, they just give you all a call? Yes, yes definitely. I have uh, had a lady that called the chamber, and I think she was uh, in a condo, and she said that she tried to volunteer at um, a home, one of the homes, and, and that they didn't, they said they weren't accepting. So, and, and for a while, we weren't. Okay. Um, with uh, us knowing how to handle COVID now, okay. There are definitely steps. We, just like an employee, we do have to do a background check. We have to keep our residents safe. So there is a process, um, but we are accepting volunteers. Um, we would have loved to have a ton of volunteers for the prom because it is a lot. Um, but, you know, we, we're gonna have a, a number of different things coming up. Um, right now, like we, you know, we definitely accepting volunteers for the weekend, having activities over the weekend. Um, our maintenance director just uh, put up a, a, a movie screen in the, um, for us, so we're going to have movies set up for the residents. As Kendra says, it's bingo all the time, but they love it. That's at their request. But we're trying to make our activity department really beefed up and have a lot of things for the residents to do. As Kendra said, um, over the summer, we're planning some, some other fun stuff. We're gonna do a, a grill and chill, which is open to the community, our families, our residents, where we're gonna have grilling. We're gonna open it up for donations for the schools and collect and give back to the community. But it's just an opportunity to come back, come, come through, have fellowship, um, possibly do a tour when you're there. But we definitely are open. We are a part of the community. A majority of our residents are from Castroville or the surrounding areas. So we definitely want to give back to the community.